These are challenging times. The division and frustration are palpable. The balance is constantly shifting. The lines consistently blurred. Truths, half-truths, lies, mixed messages, confusing headlines. All in the middle of a nation whose back has been broken. Hope is drowned out by fear. Peace is muted by chaos. Dreams are crushed by reality. Finding God in the midst of this moment is difficult. As the election draws closer, countless voices will try to sway you one way or the other. Yet your responsibility is simple. Pray earnestly. Seek God passionately. Listen carefully and vote how he leads you. God is sovereign. He always has been. He is faithful. He always will be. And nothing, absolutely nothing happens outside of his providence. This is where we find peace in this moment. I want to thank you so much for joining us for worship online again at Hope Lutheran Church. No matter where you're watching or when, I am just so glad that you decided to join us. And Pastor Carl is on a beach in Hawaii, so we send our aloha to him. And I hope you all had a wonderful week with Halloween yesterday. And then also we had the Dodgers winning the World Series. Finally, that was a great series. I hope you all enjoyed that one. And I was hoping with all the craziness in 2020, maybe a Minnesota team would win at some point, but that doesn't look like that's happening anytime soon. And I know we're heading into kind of a turbulent week, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the sermon, but I am praying for our country, and I'm praying for you, and I'm praying for God's guidance and wisdom. So let us worship together on this All Saints Day. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us sing together. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small Child of weakness, watch and pray Find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all All to him I own Sin had left a crimson stain He was Stood white as snow On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame And I love that old cross Where the dearest i
trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown and when before the throne I stand in Him complete Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He was did by the snow so i'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last i lay down sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow our reading for today comes from Ephesians, the first chapter. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of Him who accomplishes all things according to His counsel and will, so that we, who are the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you this day, O Lord. Amen. Well, I hope you all had a wonderful Halloween. I know it was different this year, but I hope it was still enjoyable. And I know we are headed for a turbulent week upcoming, so I'd like to start off with an old joke, if that's okay. So an old pastor died and was waiting in line at the pearly gates. Ahead of him was a guy dressed in sunglasses, a loud shirt, and jeans. Now, as the man approaches St. Peter, St. Peter places a golden crown upon his head and all of the angels erupt in applause. The pastor got excited. As he got closer, St. Peter stopped him and asked him to state his name and occupation. Well, I'm John Smith, and I was a pastor for over 50 years. St. Peter looks at his book and says, Okay, you may enter. Just a minute, said the pastor. What did the guy in front of me do for a living? Well, he was a taxi driver, replied Peter. Well then, why did he get a golden crown and was greeted with cheers? Up here, we go by results, said Peter. While you preached, people slept. While he drove, people prayed. Oh, I miss hearing your groans in person. Well, today is All Saints Day, the day in the church year in which we remember all of the faithful taxi drivers, pastors, and other people that have touched our lives who have died and now wait for us in the heavenly kingdom. And it's right and good to give thanks and praise to God for their lives, for the way they have shown us what it means to love, what it looks like to forgive, and have inspired our faith. For some of us, today is the day we remember a husband or wife, a brother or sister, a parent or grandparent, and for some, a son or a daughter. And we come to hear the promise that not even death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus and celebrate that they are living in the near presence of God. But All Saints Day is not just about the past. It's also about the future, about what awaits each of us. We are reminded once again that in Christ, the death that awaits us all is not the end. That through the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, Death has been defeated, and we are promised eternal life with all the saints. But I'm not sure we always live like we believe it. 
It's hard for many of us to look at the future with any hope. We fear what will happen after the election this Tuesday. We fear that what this pandemic will only get worse. We fear that the fires will continue to blaze. We fear what will happen to our pensions, our paychecks, our property. We fear our next visit to the doctor's office or what will happen to our children. Each sunrise seems to bring fresh reasons for fear, and it rolls into our lives like clouds over the San Jacinto Mountains, blocking out any rays of hope. But God doesn't want us to fear. God wants us to be assured that the future God has in store for us is greater than anything we could ever ask for or imagine. And nothing we could ever face in life can change that. Listen again to Paul's words in our reading from Ephesians. In Christ, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Did you hear that? Marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. You see, in the traditions of Paul's day, when Caesar or a government official marked something with the imperial seal, that meant it was the last word. There were no changing things. To try to remove or tamper with a royal seal was an act punishable by death. The seal meant it was fixed now and forever. And in your baptism, you were marked with the seal of the King of Kings. You were born into Christ and promised his inheritance. And that inheritance includes not only eternal life, but a life filled with joy, love, and peace. You became a saint worthy of God's love, not based on anything you have done, but based solely on the fact that through Christ and the Holy Spirit, God decided to place God's seal on you. Your future is greater than your past. When you trust that this is true, then it makes all the difference in your life, in the way you live life now. It opens your eyes to the fact that your future is not going to be determined by who wins an election, but is secured by God. It gives you the power to love your enemies, to do good to those who hate you, to bless those who curse you. It gives you the strength to turn the other cheek and not withhold even your own shirt. It gives you the power not only to do to others as you would have them do to you, but to do even more. The only way to live this kind of life is when faith, not fear, becomes your default reaction to the threats and challenges that come before you. Yes, people will break their promises. Organizations, political parties, even those closest to you will at times let you down. But God never will. God is there with you, guiding you forward. The next time you find fear standing the way of your future, I want you to do something. Take your finger and touch that seal of the Holy Spirit. Where is it, you ask? It's right here, here in the mark that was placed upon you in baptism. If you haven't been baptized yet, just send me an email and I'd love to baptize you or connect you with someone who will. If you have, then take your finger and trace the sign of the cross on your forehead and say these words with me. I have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And now you can trust that God is with you and all the saints, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the seal of the Holy Spirit that helps us to see that we do not need to be afraid in life or in death, that you promise to be with us always. Help us re remember those who have died and help us look forward to resurrection when we will all be reunited again. All this we pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. And now, join us in our hymn.
want to thank all of you who have helped support us financially during this difficult time. Your financial support is making such a difference, not only to our church community, but to our Coachella Valley and also to our world. We're supporting multiple missions and different organizations that are helping to feed the poor and clothe those who need shelter and all those sorts of needs. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you'd like to continue to partner with us, there are three ways you can do this. You can mail in a contribution to Hope Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. You can text to give simply by texting 84321. And finally, you can go to hopepd.org. Not only will you find a way to give, but you'll find all of our different Bible studies, information about our Hope Children's Center, all sorts of different activities for your family throughout the weeks. Go to hopepd.org. And if you'd really like to help us, a really easy way to do that would simply be by subscribing to our YouTube channel and liking this video. Believe it or not, those subscribes and likes help us spread the good news around the world. So if you'd like and subscribe right now, I would appreciate that. And now let us continue our worship by confessing our faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry out our faith to new people and places around the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide this country. Red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election, kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Guide this great nation of ours and bring us peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken us in your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every help, be with firefighters and those who have lost homes in wildfires here in Southern California. Help extinguish the flames and pour out your mercy and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Well, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
as we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And before you receive this benediction, once again, I'd like you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help us spread the good news. And keep going to hopepd.org for further updates as to when we will regather. It's a couple weeks out yet still, according to California, but when we can, that's where you're going to want to find all the information you can and be updated with all of our, our info going forward. So go to hopepd.org. And now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant to you his everlasting peace. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.